quantum intelligence through hallucinogens, basically mushrooms. I'm a mushroom guy. That's my, my thing. Uh, I don't look at mushrooms as a medicine, but as a tool of exploration. Uh, ayahuasca may be a medicine. Salvia, well, no, salvia's not a medicine. Salvia's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them may be medicines, but the, the first and primary utilization of uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms and the psilocybin. I'm one of the firm believers that mushrooms are extraterrestrial. They are hyperdimensional, extra-dimensional. They come through from different dimensions into interstellar space and have embedded themselves in and on the earth. And when man and woman walking across the earth encountered these as something that they thought would be food, they found that that food would give them something more, give them something more than just a little bit of nutrition because hunters and gatherers moving along uh, newly uh, deposited grasslands found that these mushrooms, while they were following the cattle, gave other things than just that nutrition. They gave a mystery, a mystery that is still a mystery to this day. And they really had a better handle on it than we did because we're trying to intellectualize it. We're trying to put it into a place where we can understand it. And it's, you can't understand it. There are no experts in this field, not one. The experts haven't been born yet. This is the beginning of this thing, the infancy. People try to uh, malign the 1960s and say, oh, the 1960s, they were doing it wrong. Timothy Leary and the others, they didn't, you know, no. They did what they did in the time that they were in with what they had. And anytime you birth in a baby, there's going to be a little bit of agitation. There's going to be a little bit of pain. But when that baby comes, you're happy with the baby. And this is the toddler stage of this community that we're in now. You're the pioneers of what we're in as far as psychedelics is concerned. So getting into this, as I said, these things are not of this earth. They're included in the earth as a mnemonic device, a device of memory. Helena Petrova Levatsky called it the Akashic Records. Ways that we access these are through being able to utilize the tryptamine hallucinogens, DMT, mushrooms, ayahuasca, and these type of things. But the things with the others is that DMT is too quick, which Andrew is working on, <laughs> which is working on. He's trying to extend the trip. Ayahuasca is kind of hard to get enough in you. Mushrooms at high dose are the quintessential hallucinogen of this earth. There's nothing like it at high dose. It will also do what all of the other hallucinogens will do at certain doses. It will take you to the realm of the ancestors. High dose mushrooms is a DM trip, DMT trip for two and a half hours. You just have to be able to stay in the space. It's not 15 minutes. You take, you smoke DMT, you go into DMT land. By the time something walks by or you see two or three things, you're coming out of the trip. And then by the time a few more minutes come by, it's dissolving in the next few minutes, you know, you're, you know, you're back saying what happened. You know, I knew some guys, they were talking about, yeah, we were, we were smoking DMT and looking at Beavis and Butthead. I'm saying, if, you, if you're smoking DMT and you break through, how are you looking at Beavis and Butthead? Where's the, where, how are you in the room? Where, how's the TV there? Because when I smoke DMT and I hold it to the last minute, Everything that's there, that's in the physical, so-called real reality, dissolves away. It's no, it's no longer there. You're someplace else, but it's not long enough. With high-dose DMT and 30 grams, 40 grams, 50 grams, dry grams, not, as they say about me on the inter internet, well, Kalindi E, he takes uh, five grams every other day and then says at the end that he's taking 40 grams. No, you take and eat 40 grams in one setting at one time. And it's like my brother said, it's bitter. I don't like the taste of it, but you chew and you chew and you chew. You can't get it the way you want it. It's not nice, it's not fun. 40 grams of mushrooms is not fun. 
You're not going to be in there, oh, well, I had some butterflies and bubbles and, you know, the fairies came through and hugged me and I had these divine beings come through and kiss my, my third eye and I, it just <laughs> burst into revelry. No. There are times that that happens, but then there are times that are dark, that are malevolent, that are serious. And you have to be able to stand these places. And it's not so much standing it, it's going back again after you've been there. That's the thing. It ain't going, because anybody can go. <laughs> it's when it calls you back and you say, damn, you know, I got, <laughs> I got, I got, you know, I didn't, I didn't say it to myself, you know, okay, it's Thursday. I'm going to go on a mushroom trip. I'm going to take 40 grams Saturday night. I got five grams of mushrooms in the freezer. You know, I've set up my uh, launch pad with my, uh, you know, uh, uh, super transdimensional blanket and my, you know, my uh, power hat and, you know, everything's ready. And then Saturday night comes, I walk to the refrigerator, it's like, um, I'm not tonight. Um, <laughs> next, next, we're going to do it next Saturday. We're going to do it next Saturday. So it's, it's not easy, it's not easy. It's not something that you cherish wanting to do, but you cherish what you get from it. Now I'm not, I'm, I'm a, personally I'm not interested in microdosing. Personally I'm not interested in post-traumatic stress disease. I'm interested in generally in those things because I'm part of the space and I'm uh, a person who believes in helping people and people need these things to be able to do it. But I'm interested in putting the pedal to the metal, pushing the envelope technologies that were ancient, that are still in our purview of things that are going on. Is that it? Okay, one minute. <laughs> okay, this is Wasir, the Lord of the Perfect Black. Now his head was knocked out. Disregard the crook and the frail, flail. This is a mushroom. It's part of the comedic secret of alchemy, side by side. Uh, real quick, let me, let me go to the last, I'm gonna just go through this. That's Phalaris grass, it had its own monoamine oxidase inhibitor into it. They fed it to the apis bulls, from which they cultivated mushrooms, not just let them grow on cow pies, but in Egypt they were cultivating, that's the, that's the dung beetle, the baby dung beetles, when they hatch, they eat mushrooms because the mushroom spores are in the dung beetles, uh, dung ball, 